ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Art of MMA. I'm Mike Ginn. That's the mechanic, Brandon Catino, back in action for another week. This week, we're recapping all the action from UFC Orlando right in my backyard. Of course, we're going to be talking about UFC 282 and Bellator 289 coming up this weekend. And does the UFC have a gambling problem? We'll talk about all that and more. But first, go ahead and check out fightersfirst.shop. Uh, get the mechanic collection, get the Art of MMA collection, get all the officially licensed collections. Fightersfirst.shop. Let our apparel be a part of your story. Of course, I'm rocking the uh, Art of MMA shirt. Brandon's got his mechanic shirt on. So go ahead and check out all of that at Fightersfirst.shop. Brandon, how you feeling today, buddy? Feeling good, man. Ready to talk some MMA with you, man. Recap the weekend and uh, preview uh, this uh, this weekend of uh, double shows. You know I wasn't going to lose in my backyard, Brandon. 3-0. Uh, I mean, you went 2-0, but one of your fights got canceled, so. Still lead dog. You know I wasn't going to lose any picks in my backyard, though, uh, even though it is about an hour away. Close as they get, though. Well, I guess – I don't know if they ever – I guess maybe they've been in Tampa. I don't remember the last time they were in Tampa. I don't think they've been in Tampa. It's been a while since they've even been in Orlando. So, this is whatever. Um, there are a couple news stories before we hop in the show I do want to get your uh, opinion on. Uh, one, we did get confirmation. It's going to be Al Jermaine and Henry Cejudo uh, probably in March. They still haven't signed the contracts, but that's next. Uh, now that it's kind of more official on both sides, do you think this is actually really going to happen? Sure, why not, man? You know, that's all Henry Cejudo kind of wanted was just a title fight. So now he now he gets his title fight. So, you know, let's see what happens. I think Henry Cejudo's plan has changed so many times because first he wanted to do a different title, right? Like he wanted 45 against Alex. Alex is now going for the lightweight title, so that's kind of up in the air. He doesn't want to wait around, so he's going to do the 35-pound title. Uh, as far as Al Jermaine, he said it a number of times. He just kind of wants the money fights now. So probably the biggest money fight there is right now for him. But I think Sean O'Malley might draw some dollars as well. Uh, there's still a lot of doubts after Sean's last fight, so he might have to have one more. Kind of makes sense. Kind of makes sense. Uh, speaking of uh, opponents, TJ Dillashaw announced his retirement. I guess he told the UFC about a week ago after his shoulder surgery. Uh, a lot of fighters don't really believe him. A lot of fighters think he's going to be back. They just think he's kind of, you know, in that weird state after surgery. You think we see TJ again? Well, because I think the reason is because, like I say, he had his surgery, but I think they said that I think he's going to have to have a second surgery. So that means he's going to be out for a while. Yeah, it's you know? a lot worse so, than they thought it was. Yeah, so so exactly. So so I want to say after you know after having that second surgery, you're going to be out. You're going to be out even longer. I think he. I think he's just like, yeah, I'm I'm done. Yeah, I mean. He probably, you know, this age, what, TJ's like, what, 39, 38? He's up there. No, uh, I think it's 35, 36. Uh, well, either way, mid-30s, you know, upper 30s. By the time he comes back, he might be like 38 or so, depending on how bad the shoulder surgery is. So, you know, maybe he doesn't want to do it anymore. Uh, we'll see, right? Um, a lot of people think this is also, sadly, a way for him to get out of the USADA pool and kind of uh, rehab. I do see, like, a lot of people talk about steroids, and they talk about how it helps your performance. I saw it in baseball when you talk about Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, a lot of these guys that you talk about, you know, they they did this and they did that. The biggest thing you see is you look at somebody like Ken Griffey Jr. whose injuries mounted up because he didn't really do steroids or anything, or at least didn't get caught doing them. You see somebody like Barry Bonds who did, you know, he never got busted for a test, but, you know, got caught basically grand jury wise. As soon as he stopped taking them, what happened? His body fell apart. And, TJ getting hurt after not being on any kind of uh, performance enhancers. It's kind of like a telltale sign. Like your body just usually, a lot of people use steroids more to stay healthy than they do actually for performance. I don't think a lot of people actually know that. Um, yeah. But it is a kind of a crazy way to keep you, keep you healthy and keep you in, in the game. Uh, the last other thing is uh, one's going to have a card right here in America. They're going to have a uh, one on a, one Demetrius Johnson versus Marias three. It's going to take place on May fifth. Uh, it's going to be one of the prime events. It's going to be in Colorado. Yeah, uh, you excited about them make, you, you excited about them making a U.S. debut? Yeah, that's cool. I mean, we all uh, we heard that Colorado was was really the a uh, leading state for them for them to make their their one debut. So here it is, going to be in Colorado. Uh, like I said, it's going to be May fifth. You know, so that Cinco de Mayo holiday. You know, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, I'll try to be sober for that event. Um, <laughs> I do love me some Cinco de Mayo, but uh, that said, yeah, that should be some fun stuff going on. One's making big moves. We always say they can't be a global promotion if they don't leave Asia. Well, now they are. So the, the competition is definitely getting stiffer 
uh, as far as UFC and one goes, as well as PFL and Bellator. So a lot of stuff going on in 2023. Uh, Brandon, let's go ahead and jump into this show. UFC Orlando in my backyard about an hour away. UFC did not give me a press pass, so I watched it on TV with everybody else. Uh, that said, I saw a lot of empty seats there. Maybe if they weren't charging, you know, $250 or whatever it was for the nosebleeds, a lot of people might have showed up. Florida's not a very rich state, people. Got to You got to appeal to the masses. But the event itself was fantastic. Wonder Boy and Kevin Holland in the main event. You had Rafael Dos Anjos, uh, Mateus Nicolau, uh, Pavlovic with a big event, big uh, big show. Uh, a lot of people talking about it. Let's go ahead and jump into that main event, Brandon. Uh, Stephen Wonder Boy Thompson, Kevin Holland went four rounds. Into the fourth round, Kevin Holland's corner stopped it. Uh, tell the people at home what happened in that fight and what you think of it. Yeah, it was uh, karate versus kung fu, and uh, karate got the dub. Uh, remember, when in doubt, always go with karate over kung fu. Uh, it was, a, it was a, it was a, it was a barn burner. Like I said, Kevin Holland came out strong, like we knew he would. You know, like I said, we know we definitely knew he had, he had the power advantage. He, a, he, he had, he had Thompson rocked in that first yeah, round. Yeah, you know, he's like I said, you know, he definitely rocked him, but you know, Wonder Boy uh, bounced back, came back, and just, just kept his distance, and uh, and was, and was just, and he was rocking Kevin Holland, and Kevin Holland, you know, as as well had, you know, had a chin. Uh, he was taking some shots. Uh, you know, it's one of the things like I always tell people is like, yo, when people are throwing kicks, don't use your hands to block kicks because your legs are stronger than your hands. That's what Kevin Holland was doing. And boom, he ended up getting his hand hurt. And that's why, and that's why that's why they had to stop the fight. The only thing I would say about what Kevin Holland is too is like you saw Wonder Boy went uh went down a couple of times. You had him down, but you let him get back up. You should have just followed him down and kept him down. Remember, you already you are a Travis Luter black belt. You probably had the advantage on the ground, but well, they had an you, agreement you though. Do that. They had an agreement. They had a handshake deal. They weren't going to go to the ground. All right. Well, hey, man, so, it's, all about, it's about getting W's out here, and obviously you didn't want to get that W then. Well, I mean, I, I think since that quasi-retirement, I don't think he cares about uh, wins and losses as much as paydays and shows. Um, They had an agreement. Uh, Stephen Thompson talked about it in the post-fight press conference. They they had a basically like a gentleman's agreement. We're not going to do that. We're going to stay standing the whole time, and that's what it was. Uh, Kevin Holland had Stephen Thompson in all kinds of trouble in the first round. Like, he was landing, and Thompson was on wobbly legs. Holland just couldn't put him away. And then Stephen Thompson started finding range with his kicks and everything else, and that became a different fight. By the fourth round, Thompson was just unloading on him, right, nonstop, like just having fun with it. Uh, Holland says he broke his hand probably in the first round. Uh, I could see that, you know, he definitely was a different fighter after the first round, especially after the second round, he started fading more and more. Uh, but that said, Stephen Thompson also found his rhythm. Stephen Thompson also found his range, which as a kickboxer, you know, that's everything, you know, you, you find that distance, it's all, it's all over. He started doing spinning kicks and all kinds of stuff. And he found the liver kick, right? Like that liver kick really messed up Kevin Holland, even though Kevin Holland's tough as nails. He, he fought through everything and kept coming. Uh, his corner had to stop that fight. He wasn't dropping. In fact, uh, the knockdown in the fourth round was the first time Holland had been knocked down in his career, um, as far as an official knockdown goes. So Kevin Holland's super tough. Now it looks like maybe Derek Brunson's next because they're exchanging uh, all kinds of words on uh, Twitter. So we'll see. Uh, as far as Derek Brunson goes, he hasn't really been able to get back in the cage. He just dropped out of a fight because of injury purposes again. So mm -hmm. see what's up with him. What's next for Steven Thompson, Brandon? Uh, do we see the Masvidal rematch? Do we see another kind of rematch? I mean, it's pretty much all rematches for him at this point, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, I know he wants uh, the Masvidal fight, but we'll see. I mean, who has, I have no idea what what Jorge Masvidal is doing these days, saying he was supposed to fight Gilbert Burns, and then as you know, that that's not happening now. So, I mean, like I said, I think he's ranked number six. I mean, maybe he could get a uh, Vicente Luque fight, you know. Uh, so, you know, we'll see from there. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind seeing that fight. I mean, they fought too, though. Like I said, it's all rematches. I think the only fight that makes sense that we haven't seen, if you want to give him somebody new, maybe Bilal. If Bilal wants to stay active while he's waiting for a title shot. But even then, Bilal would be taking another chance fighting down again, um, which I don't think he wants to do at this point. I think he wants to wait. Uh, he, Thompson's in a weird position. You could also give him an up-and-coming like Rachmanov or something like that. You know, another uh, different test, but Rachmanov was definitely going to take him down, right? Like, he's not going to play around. He's going to wrestle with him. Um, or you can give him a veteran like Neil Magny or somebody, right? 
Um, should always be a fun fight. Neil Magny's won a couple fights, so yeah. But Magny, but Magny's about to fight um, uh, Gilbert Burns. Yeah, and like I said, if maybe if he gets that win, maybe he gets jumped up and can fight somebody like Thompson. Yeah, no, I thought so. When you were talking about Bilal Muhammad, I'm like, they had already just fought. Like that was that was Stephen Thompson's last fight. Yeah, Bilal butchered him. Um, so it's like, yeah, it's like I said, it's all rematches. It's kind of hard to find a new opponent for him. Um, that said, you know, Stephen Thompson, another big win. Also, uh, Rafael Dos Anjos with another big win. He got the uh, submission in the second round over Bi- Brian uh, Barbarina. Uh, Bar- Barbarina's Legends Tour comes to a- an end. Uh, what do you think of that fight? And it's like exactly how I thought it would be, man. RDA just putting that pressure on him. That's what he did. Got him down, smothered him. That's it. He was either in his face or he had him on the ground and, and he was just smothering him. And that's what he did. Got his back. Rear naked choke, man. The man, the man has a has a vice grip, then just and just squeezed and squeezed and squeezed until until Barbarina was tapping. Yeah, I mean, just like another classic performance for RDA. Barbarina had moments early, but RDA showed his his experience. Like I said last week, his experience. You know, putting yourself in certain situations and not putting yourself in certain situations. I think uh, RDA is, you know, kind of like Thompson, kind of in that weird position of what's next. Uh, Hey, it could be it could be RDA versus versus Thompson at 170. I, mean, I, 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 wouldn't, at 170. I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be mad at that one. And I also would say, uh, if you want to talk about it, uh, the Fazeev rematch, if Fazeev isn't matched up with somebody, because Fazeev had to come back and win in the fifth round, right? Um, that wouldn't wouldn't be a bad rematch. Or there's always a fun fight in Michael Chandler. You know, I don't think they've ever matched up, so. That would be a new matchup. That would be a banger. They both come in to trying to kill each other. So, you know, Michael Chandler doesn't get that Connor match that everybody seems to want. Maybe him and RDA might be a good matchup. What do you think about that one? Yeah, I mean, I, I'd be down for Michael Chandler versus RDA. Uh, also in that card, uh, man, Nicolau looked great against Matt Schnell. Uh, he was countering the whole time, kind of just waiting for his moment, got the big knockout. Uh, Sergey Pavlovic with the big knockout over Tua. He just punished Bam Bam. What'd you think of that one, Brandon? Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, I think, uh, like I said, one, it could be where, where Tua Basta came back too quick. Like I said, he had that banger with uh, with Gone. You know, maybe he should take a little more time off, or it's also with Pavlovic. It's just, it's just uh, underrated. Like I said, you know, he did the same thing to uh, Derek Lewis, and now and, and now here he is doing the same thing to uh, Ty Tua Basta. Like I said, it wasn't, it wasn't that much. You know, he he just he he had a, he had a good game plan. You saw Tuabasa kind of cock back. When he cocked back, uh, uh, his opponent just just hit him just hit him on that hit him on the same side and just caught him. And the man the man put him down with a jab. You know, he definitely had some power in in the hands as well. I mean, Pavlovich, Pavlovich is seventeen and one. Only loss was that debut Overeem. UFC debut against Overeem. And other than that, you look at his record, man. He has just so many first round finishes throughout his career. Uh, he took that time off in 2020 because of injury and COVID and all this other stuff going on. He's been back. He fought. He's got three first round knockouts in the in 2022. Uh, so he's going to have a big 23 coming up. I think personally, uh, he's going to be probably one of those guys you're going to have to throw in top five fights in the heavyweight division coming up next year. Uh, also on that card, uh, Roman Dolodiz came in. Dolize, Dol- I always butcher his name. Uh, against Jack Hermanson, came in on late notice and took Jack Hermanson out. Like he showed that his skills on the ground were just as good as Jack's, and his skills on his hands were even better. So big way for Roman, um, or as John Anik said, like the scariest dude he ever had to like talk mm-hmm. to in a in a pre fight uh, thing. Uh, the pick the pick you should have made last week, uh, your boy uh, Eric Anders got the big win over Kyle Dawkins. Is Kyle Dock is kind of like on the way down. Like he, there was a lot of hype behind him, but lately uh, he's, been, he's been getting knocked out. Uh, I mean, I think, I think, I think it's the same thing. Uh, like I just said with Ty Tuvas, I think a little things were like, I think he came back too soon, man. Like I said, I think he said he had, he had a broken orbital. I, I mean, he did let it heal, but I mean, so sometimes when with injuries, man, you know, you just got, you got to give yourself a little bit more time. Like to me, it just seemed with him, I mean, hey, Eric Anders does hit hard, but it just kind of seemed like with him, man, he got popped and it was just like, it just really like affected him. Yeah, I mean, like Eric said, you know, he's not getting any younger. He needs to make a run, so he had to take this one super serious. Uh, Philip Rowe with a big win over Nico Price, man, that was a back and forth. That third round alone was back and forth. Uh, of course, Rowe came in overweight. 
uh, had to give up part of his purse for this fight. Um, but he did get the win. Big knockout in the third round. Uh, your girl, Angela Hill, with the big win over Ducate, really wasn't in question. She kind of controlled the whole thing. Uh, the veteran, Clay Guida, with a split decision over Scott Holzman. Scott Holzman retired after the bout. So thank you, Scott. Uh, he's had a nice, long, fantastic career. Uh, Michael Johnson, what a great performance against uh, uh, Mark Dacasse. Like, he, everywhere he beat uh, Dacasse to the punch. Uh, Jonathan Pierce, uh, who actually threw up after the fight because he had Elkins' blood on him, funny enough. Um, he got the win. Nathan Levy with the win over Valdez. Uh, Francis Marshall over Rojo with a big knockout. And I told y'all, I keep telling y'all, Yasmin Howdy, huge TKO in the second round. Ground and pound to finish off that fight. But, man, tell me she doesn't look like a future contender, Brandon. Yeah, no, I mean, she definitely uh, had to uh, overcome some some adversity. You know, you know, she had got dropped in the first, but she came back. And then, you know, she put it she put it on, on her opponent and got, and got the stoppage in the uh, second round. Like I said, and those don't know. She trains with Brandon Moreno and all those, all those uh, killers over in Tijuana, which I guess Brandon Moreno will have to go back to now that James Krause is down. But we'll talk about that later. Um, fantastic card, Brandon, from top to bottom. What were some of your highlights? Yeah, no, like I said, it was the uh, Angela Hill fight. You know, she definitely looked good. Like I said, it was a master class. You know, she just basically made just like outwork Ducati. Like it was, you know, you talk about man, like I said, you know, Angela Hill, like I said, you know, her record is very, is very deceiving. Like I said, you know, if you look at her record, you'd be like, oh, she's a 500 fighter, but she's only, but she's only goes up against killers. That's it. Yeah, she also fights, fights, killers, fights killers and killers and saying that, that experience, that, that 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 translates in your fight, and then you go with somebody else who doesn't have the same amount of experience as you. Man, you could just blow them away, and that's and that's what she did. It's kind of the same thing for Michael Johnson, right? Like yeah. Michael Johnson has a lot more wins than losses, but that's because he started off so hot. Over the last few years, he's been very much a five hundred fighter. Like you tried to write him off, and then he has some big knockouts, big finishes. Man, he looked great. He looked really good at UC Orlando. Um, and then one other highlight I really had uh, was also uh. Clay Guida, like the dude just never stops ever. And he was such a fan favorite. You're the audience just chanting his name. A lot of respect for the two veterans in that card. Um, but that is UFC Orlando. That is our reactions. Make sure you leave a comment. Let us know what some of your thoughts were on UFC Orlando. Um, and I actually got uh, got able to even talk about some of the fights uh, with some local people while that event was going on. So it was a pretty cool thing in and around Tampa. A lot of people were buzzing about it. So. I uh, hope the UFC comes back and and probably brings those ticket prices down just a little bit so everybody can go to the shows. That's kind of a little pet peeve I have of NBA and NFL and all these places. It's like even if you want to sit in the nosebleeds, the tickets are kind of ridiculous nowadays. So, All right, Brandon, we're going to do a battleground for a second week in a row. We kind of talked about uh, James Krauss a little bit in the last segment and, and opening up, and it's just it's it's a subject that won't go away because it's only getting worse. Um, the title of this battleground is Does the UFC Have a Gambling Problem? And I'm going to preface it that I'm going to kick it to you, and we're going to go back and forth on this one like we do in Battleground. But my biggest thing is this. We don't know all the details about James Krause. That, that will come out as it comes out. Um, it doesn't look good from the way they're reacting to everything. So we'll see. Um, Derek Miner's already been cut uh, for not disclosing the injury. James Krause has been benched. Any fighters are still with glory uh, are not going to fight. Um, they're, they're suspended with James Krause. If they go somewhere else, we'll see, of course, the biggest fighter of all of that. And we've already seen a couple of fight changes too, but the biggest fighter of all of that, Brandon Moreno just recently went over there the last year or so um, training with James Krause. Does he go to Tijuana? Does he go to extreme couture? What does he do? Because they're not going to cancel the Figueredo fight over this whole thing in, in January. So how much are they really sticking to like benching all the, the uh, James Cross fighters over all this? And then the other thing, Brandon, the other side of this is it's very hypocritical of the UFC. If you look at every commercial between fights, even on pay-per-view, it's a betting commercial, whether they're tied into one thing or tied into another thing, whether it's the fighters who are all on social media, giving their betting picks uh, before every card. Uh, they have a very tight knit relationship with DraftKings. Uh, there's so many gambling aspects of this that how can you 
We see this with, with baseball and Pete Rose. We've seen this with NFL and recently with Calvin Ridley. How do you police this brand? And that's kind of the first question. Like, how do you keep your sport honest in a, in a when they're headquartered in Las Vegas and have so many gambling ties? And then the other thing I want to ask you is, what do you make of all the other fighters being punished for what James Krause situation is? All right. So one, I mean, I don't, I mean, once it's going back to you, I don't see it being hypocritical because it's even they're, they're promoting with you know, betting and everything like that. They're just like how the NFL is, you know, how that's basically they put it out. We're saying like you yourself cannot bet on the MMA fight. Like, that's just how it is. Just like how it is in the NFL. That's why Calvin really got suspended because he was placing bets. They don't want you to do that. You can bets on other sports. You just can't place bets on your sports. And yeah. the thing with Dream, James Kraus is he's being investigated, not by the UFC, but by the athletic commission. And it's where, it's where they're worried that either fight fixing is happening or basically insider information is being passed on where he's telling people. And that's why, you know, what bet bets are being made and stuff like that. So he's being invested. So hence why it's like, well, if you're training in his gym, he might be either saying fight fishing or he might be saying something going on. So basically all those guys are just going to another, to a gym that's like down the road uh, from, from what I hear. So, so they're still in uh, 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 Missouri, um, you know? So, so, I mean, so they're just being down the road is just saying like, just James Crouch just can't be your coach. You know, you got to go with, I guess, the other coaches and everything like that. Um, I mean, it does it does suck for the fighters, you know, that, you know, that are under James Krause like that. But again, it's it's not it's it's the it's that. I mean, we already see Jeff Molina out of his fight at uh, UFC Vegas 67. He's already yeah. been replaced. Yeah. You know, so I mean, so I'm saying this is this is the athletic commission, you know, um, of Nevada, the one doing the investigation. But then you see you saw what happened with Canada with 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 uh, with uh, Ontario, which ba- were. Where basically they just said, "Hey guys, we just can't bet at all on the UFC because they don't know what's happening in the UFC because they're basically putting the whole thing as a blanket where everybody, you know, could be, you know, could be fight fixing or anything like that." Like saying this is just bad for the whole sport because they're because now on terms basically like we don't know we don't know who's fixing fights, what's going on, so we're just gonna wait till basically this whole investigation is done with. Yeah, and look, it goes back to a number of things. Like this was a big issue if you talk about fight fixing. We just talked about this not too long ago with Peter Yan and Sean O'Malley and, and conspiracy theories and fight fixing. And then when you have something like like people like, oh, you're, you're being exaggerating, like this is 2022, that stuff doesn't happen. And then you see the thing happen with James Krause just a couple, a few weeks later. Uh, and what we don't know what all has happened because it's all kind of still under investigation. But, you know, with the Derek Minor and, and the injury and the way the books kind of jumped, now, all of a sudden, there's more questions than our answers. And when you look at it, UFC is under the microscope, and they're going to take their money. Look, they're a business. The NFL is a business. NBA is a business. They're going to take their money from DraftKings. They're going to take their money from BetUS and all these other different books that are they're throwing money at them. And like, here, take my money. Mm-hmm. But then when you actually have a gambling scandal, like it just shows almost the ego of the UFC because – as a business person myself, obviously, fighters first, right here, right? If we got caught doing something wrong, the last thing I would do is have a bunch of ads about that thing. But that just shows they don't they don't really see the connection or they just don't care that they think the fans will care because they're going to keep making their money. But and go ahead. Wait, I was going to say but but what's the difference in the NFL with Calvin Ridley being suspended but you still see they do DraftKings ads, they do FanDuel all the time. There's no so difference. There's no difference. It's just as hypocritical. Um, and look, we've been saying the NFL, if you, you're a sports fan, you've been claiming the NFL is hypocritical for decades, right? Um, everything from the way they treated domestic violence to now the gambling thing. It's, it's one thing after another, right? It's all about the dollars at the end of the day. But in my mind, how can you not only punish James Krause, but punish fighters like Jeff Molina? Uh, they're obviously not going to punish one of their poster boys like Brandon Moreno, but other smaller fighters are going to get caught up in, in this crossfire over an investigation that they don't really know exactly what happened. They just know that, hey, they didn't tell him the fighter was hurt. Well, guess what? A lot of people didn't know TJ Dillashaw was hurt going into that fight. 
should his whole camp be sh- shut down? Should all the the Bang Ludwigs and all them be banned? Like, where but where does this end? But the thing is, with T.J. Dillashaw, the 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 betting lines didn't change. What the what what the fight with Manor was, all of a sudden, people people were picking his opponent. You know, like like two hours before the fight, and plus two, a lot of people were picking him to get a finish, which this guy basically isn't known for for you know for uh for a uh, for a knockouts. So that's where it is. That's where that's where that's where it just becomes a little fishy. While with T.J. Dillashaw, everything was kept was was kept under wraps. While with this fight, something hey man, the leak was out and everything like that, and the, and the and the money lines went. You know, same thing with uh with uh Francis Ngannou. You know, word was about his knee, but again though, the betting lines didn't didn't jump like that. You know, we're here. The betting lines jump, hence why they think somebody either was putting out some information. Somebody tip somebody. Yeah, you know, so that's so that's where it is. I think I want to say if the betting lines didn't jump or change how this one did, everything would be would be the same. But because that happened, and also too the way how the fight went down, then it's like, all right, something seems a little fishy. Let's you know, let's let's investigate that. And again, the other fighters again is is it's yes, you are at this gym, does suck, but it's basically like, hey, don't be with James Krause. You just got to go to this other gym, which I hear like they're all going to because they're kind of under the same tree. You know, it's like it's like it's like a sister gym. So they're all training there. So basically everybody should should still be able to get the fights unless people are just like, no, James Krause is my coach. I'm right. I'm right or die with him. Then. Yeah. All right. Like Jeff Molina. Yeah. You know, it's going to be a tough situation, but I do find it to be a little hypocritical. Personally, I think if you're going to sit there and talk about all the gambling stuff nonstop. And then somebody gambles on something, you know, uh, we don't know. James Krause did something or didn't do something. It's just very suspect, like you said, with the betting lines and everything else. Um, I think Derek Miner might even be like kind of a casualty in this war because he got cut because he was the fighter. When truth yep. be told, he was hurt. He just kept trying to fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, he got finished because he was hurt. He, he had a bad leg. They went after the leg. Um, you know, if you have inside information, you're going to take it as a fighter, right? Like if you're fighting somebody you know is coming in there with a bad leg, you're going to kick the leg, right? doesn't matter like you know um so it is what it is you know the same reason tj didn't tell anybody he had a bad shoulder going into the fight because he didn't want al Jermaine to attack the shoulder it just so happens that al Jermaine happens to be you know a master of taking the back and, and getting people down and that shoulder was going to pop out um only person really knew was the ref and that's why he gave him a little bit of leeway but other than that <coughs> dana didn't know a lot of people didn't know so uh Leave a comment. Let us know. Do you think the UFC has a gambling problem? Do you think, uh, in general, sports has a gambling problem? Let us know. That's uh, definitely something to take a look at. Um, Brandon, before we move on, I do want to mention real quick, one did have a couple great cards last week. Uh, we saw Malikin just absolutely punish the Ritter to take the title. Uh, Jared Brooks, former UFC fighter, also got the win with the decision over Joshua Pasillo. Uh, a couple great cards there. Uh, one continues to do big things. Um, but we're going to go ahead and make our picks today. It's not all about the UFC. Bellator is in action as well. Big card for Bellator. Big card for UFC. Both of them bringing the heat this week. Uh, but we're going to start with Bellator 289. Uh, we got Hafion Stotts going against uh, Danny Sabatello, a fight we've been waiting for. Uh, we also got Liz Carmouche in the rematch against uh, Velasquez. Uh, Brandon, we're going to jump right in that main event. Tell me who you got and why. Uh, I'm going with Rafion Stotts. Uh, to me, man, Danny Sabatello is a wrestler. That's all he has is his wrestling. I think Stotts. I think Stotts will be able to 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 stop. You know, to stop him to keep the fight standing up. And the fight standing up, I got Stotts, better striker, got the hands, got you know he has the he has the he has the kicks as well as you saw with his fight uh, with. Um, he um, are you talking about his last uh, Archuleta? Yeah, Archuleta. You know that's what he did. He caught him with a kick. Uh, you know, Sorry, to the I was head. looking at. You tell his page for a second. Sorry. Yeah. So yeah. So 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 that's why that's why I'm going I'm going with Stotts. You know, up until the last couple of fights, I think the level of competition was about the same. But this time, I think you're looking at it. I think Stotts has fought tougher dudes. And Sabatello, uh, Higo's probably the toughest guy he's ever fought, and he ran through through Higo. But Sabatello just ran through the former champion Archuleta. He ran through Magomedov. Uh, and then before that, you know, he's been fighting a bunch of up and comers. But I like Stotts a lot in this fight. I think Stotts has a more well-rounded game. Uh, 
I can't wait to see Sergio Pettis come back. And after this Grand Prix, him and Pettis kind of get it on if, they're, if he's still champion at that point. Um, the only problem I have is that Stotts keeps calling himself world champion instead of interim champion. But, you know, we'll settle that when the time is right. Uh, I think Stotts just has more tools in the shed. Like you said, uh, Sabatello's a one-trick pony. He did show some good striking against Higo uh, to set up his takedowns, to set up his uh, in and outs, uh, to kind of dominate that fight. But if you play games on the feet, I think Stotts is going to hurt you. And if you want to wrestle, you're talking about another All-American level wrestler. So um, I'm going to go ahead and take Stotts in this one uh, over Sabatello as well. Uh, over in the co-main event, we got a rematch for the women's flyweight title. Liz Carmouche, who, man, what a story, right, Brandon? Like, always a contender, never quite got over that hump, finally got the belt um, late in her career. Juliana Va- Velasquez, her first loss ever, gets the rematch. Uh, what happens in the rematch, Brandon? Uh, I'm going with Liz Carmouche. Uh, again, I picked it the first time. I'm going to pick it the second time. Like I said, I think I Am Gorilla's man just going to be stronger. Uh, I think this time, hopefully, you know, she she does have the submissions as well. And I think she's got the ground and pound, man. I think I think as long as she can get this fight down to the ground, it's hers. If it stays standing up, that's where it could it could be a little iffy. Like, say, you know, I think Velasquez does have the reach, you know, does have height on her. But I, I think I am Gorilla will be able to get in, take her down. And uh, and hopefully this time we we won't we won't have any any crazy stoppage. It'll, it'll, yeah. it'll be right on point. Yeah. I mean, I don't think look, I don't think the last one was a bad stoppage. I just don't. I think Liz got the win, I think. Velasquez wasn't going anywhere. She was stuck. She was in a position. She was stuck. Um, Brandon, I'm going to throw one more pick at you this week uh, because I didn't put it in the rundown, but it is the other side of the Bantamweight uh, Grand Prix. Magomedov versus Patchy Mix. Uh, Patchy Mix had a big performance last time. Magomedov's been dominant. Who you got in this one, buddy? I mean, man, I would like Patchy Mix. I want to, I want to, I want to root for Patchy Mix, but I just think, I just think Magomedov is gonna is gonna be too much for him. Uh, like I said, I mean, you know, my, uh, Patchy Mix is kind of like it's kind of like Aljamain Sterling, man. He needs to take your back, but I think Magomedov can do it all. He can he can take your back, or he can just use his wrestling, stay in front of you, ground and pound, has submissions, has striking as well. So I think I, I think it, I think it's gonna be Stotts versus uh, Magomedov in the finals. I actually, uh, I was, I went against you the last time when you picked Horaguchi against Patchy Mix. I'm picking Patchy Mix again. Um, I do know Magomedov is super tough. I've always been a big fan of his. His only losses are to Stotts and back in the day to Peter Young. Like this dude has run through everybody. But that said, Patchy Mix only has one loss. Patchy Mix just ran through Horaguchi and has been very dominant as of late. And he's showing more on his feet. Like he's showing more with his hands lately. That Horaguchi thing, he did a lot setting it up on his feet. So um, I'm going to go ahead and take Patchy Mix again. And plus, I think Patchy Mix versus Stotts in a, in a final, I think would be fire. I think that's just going to be like must-see TV, a lot of fireworks and a good fight. So we'll see if we get there, Brandon, but I'm taking Patchy Mix in that one. Uh, what's the other fight you want to take a look at on this card tonight? Uh, the My fight pick is actually also two on the main card. I'm going with uh, Dalton Roster versus uh, Anthony Adams. Dalton Ross, an undefeated fighter, fights down in uh, fights out of uh, American Top Team. Uh, I mean, dude, he's been he's been on he's he's been he's been uh, doing his thing. You know, say another another up and coming, another prospect that Bellator has uh, has really been showcasing, and I think this is gonna be another W for him. Yeah, I mean, he lo- looks fantastic. Uh, I can't believe I still can't believe you didn't take Denise Keyholes in this in this uh, on this fight card. Yeah, I know, I know. Got to switch it up on you. Man, I know that had to hurt your soul a little bit. Um, my fight pick is another dude that's been dominant, Cody Law. Cody Law has been destroying people, first, second round finishes left and right since he got to Bellator. He's fighting a tough fighter in uh, Link, Link Yoshi, but or Kenoshi, but man, I, I just think Cody Law all day. Um, until somebody proves me otherwise, this guy is just going through. He's like kind of has that Rory McDonald thing, wears the suit, the tie, kind of like that natural born killer thing. Um, man. Cody Law is, uh, is trouble in that featherweight division, which is already packed. Like, you know, the featherweight division is already stacked in, in Bellator. So uh, that that's a fun thing to see. I think Cody Law is going to be contending before too long. Uh, also on the card, like I mentioned, Denise Keyholz, she's going to be going against uh, Joanne. Uh, we got Kyle Crushmer uh, against w- Julia Willis. That's going to be a hell of a fight. Uh, Kevin Bohm versus Kai Kamaka. Uh, you got Mark Leminger versus Michael Lombardo. Pat Downey versus... Uh, uh, Christian uh, Eccles, uh, you got Cass Bell versus Jared Scroggins, Randy Field versus Christina 
Cas Cas I was I always butcher that one. And then somebody I just picked recently came, came right back. Lucas Brennan's fighting again already against Dre Miley, uh, the one-eyed dragon, uh, which is always a good story to root for. But I don't think I don't think he really has too much of a shot against Lucas Brennan. Um, surprised to see. Are you surprised to see Lucas bounce back so quick? He just fought like two weeks ago. No, remember his fight didn't happen. It got canceled. Oh, you're right. You're right. That was my fight pick that got canceled. You're absolutely yep. right. All right. Well, then it makes sense, I guess. Um, I'm actually surprised. Like, I love Dre Miley's story. I'm surprised he gets sanctioned uh, to fight. You know, we talked about some of your uh, issues with athletic commissions. Uh, I'm surprised Connecticut uh, will license him, but he's a hell of a fighter and he deserves the opportunity. Uh, but he does have the vision problems, obviously, with the one eye. But then again, we saw Michael Bisping with a boy's uh, one eye do pretty big things in the UFC. So we'll see. Uh, before we move on, any other highlights on that car you think people need to take a look at? Yeah, no, nah, I mean, uh, you already mentioned it, but Pat Downey's definitely a guy to, to, keep, to keep your eyes on, you know, saying uh, he's 1-0. Uh, and uh, let's see what he does. Like, say, he's known as a wrestler and everything like that. But I think uh, his last fight, I mean, he was, he, was quick, he was quick with it. So we'll see. You know, he could be like Bo Nichols. Yeah, I was about to say, everybody's talking about Bo Nichols. Don't, don't sleep on Pat Downey. Yep. Um, he has definitely got the same pedigree as Bo Nichols and, and probably uh, just as well-rounded. I think Bo Nichols is maybe just a touch touch better, but, I mean, they both both could be big stars really quickly. Uh, we're going to move on. Uh, last card to talk about of the day, UFC 282 uh, pay-per-view. Uh, the whole main event got switched out when uh, Yuri had to give up his title. Glover didn't want to fight either of the other guys on short notice. So here we are, Jan Blagovich versus Magomed Ankaleya for the uh, light heavyweight title. We also got Patty Pimlet and Jared Gordon in the co-main event. Um, and then a, a number of other fights have kind of changed up or been what they are, but we got a stacked card as well. Uh, Brandon, let's go ahead and jump into that main event. Uh, who is going to be the new, not interim, but the new UFC light heavyweight title champion? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Ankaleya. Uh, I think he's going to be able to take Jan down, control him, Ground and pound, maybe even get a submission on. Uh, like I said, I, I mean, I think, I think, of course, of course, we all know about Polish power. Jan, you know, Jan doesn't got the power, but the thing is, though, can he, can he keep the fight standing up? And I just don't think he can. I think Anka Life can just control him and just, and just smother him. The only trouble I, I see for Anka Leib is that his only loss is Paul Craig, who wrapped him up like a pretzel and made him tap out. Whereas Jan, Jan's not afraid to take you down and lay on you and do certain things if he can take you down as well. I don't know if these both men will try to stay standing or if this will be a wrestling contest. It could go either way. Um, I just think Ankaleev is the younger, stronger fighter in this case, and I, I'm going to go with Ankaleev as well because I think he just probably has a, a little more of a speed advantage and a little bit more of a power advantage at his age difference. Um, he's only 30. You know, Jan's pushing 39-40. So I'm going to go with Ankaleev in this one just because I feel like he's just a little bit faster of a fighter can get there a little bit quicker. So um, Over in the co-main event, we got Patty the Batty, uh, Patty Pimlet going against a good friend of ours, Jared Flash Gordon. Who you got in this one? Uh, I'm going with Jared Flash Gordon. Uh, I just think, and I think, I kind of want to say, I think if this fight stays standing, Patty Pimlet maybe has a chance. But I know Pat Pimlin is really known is really known for the ground, but but so is Jared Gordon, and I just I just think that Jared Gordon can can just can match him down there. Uh, but I just think Jared Gordon, man, like I said, he can use his hands. Pat Pimlin to me most likely isn't trying to use his hands. You know, like I said, you you already saw in his in his first debut in the UFC, he got dropped, but you know he did come back. Kudos to him. You know he has he has bounced back from getting dropped, but I think Jared Gordon has that. Had, uh, has that finishing touch where where if he does get Patty Pimlet down, he's gonna he's gonna follow him and he's gonna finish him. Yeah, I mean Patty's gotten himself in trouble before in the past, like trying to go too quickly, too fast. Um, but he look, despite some hiccups, every fight in the UFC has been a finish. Jared Gordon, for better or worse, has been a very up and down fighter. Um, I think Patty at this point in both of their careers probably has more tools. Um, I'm going to go with Patty in this one, but I can see Jared giving him fits, especially if Jared tries to wrestle him. Um, 
I think Patty likes to be the more dominant fighter and try to scrap and get people's backs. And I think Jarrett's kind of like the same kind of fighter. So that could be trouble for him. But I do think uh, Patty's a little bit better of a fighter. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, give the slight edge to uh, Patty the Batty in that one. Um, what is your fight pick to watch on that card? Uh, what is my fight pick? I don't even remember. <laughs> Oh, oh I'm really getting hot. Nah, Billy, um, Q, bro. Billy Q. Yeah, exactly. Like, no, nah, yeah, my 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 fight's oh, it's one of the featherweight bouts on the early prelims. I'm going with the Billy Q versus uh Alexander Hernandez fight, and I'm gonna go with Billy Q. You know, like I said, uh I mean, I'm just gonna rock with Billy Q. You know, I know, I know we I know we had that loss to my teammate Shane Burgos, but even though before that, man, to me he was on a roll. Uh I just I just like Billy Q over uh over uh over Hernandez, like I said, Hernandez. He had he had he had that great hype at 155. Cowboy stopped him, and I kind of feel like saying after that fight, he kind of really hasn't been the same. He's been up and uh, down, yeah, very 500. You know, and also, and also too now, right? He went from 155 to 145. Now he thinks it's his home, but I think I think Billy Q is just just gonna be able to take it to him. Uh, I had a tough time picking my fight pick for this one, but I decided to go with a fighter I know that a lot of you might not know, uh, King Eric Silva, uh, the Luke's uh, featherweight champion. Uh, had a big uh, performance in Dana White's Contender Series with the knockout, got the contract. Going against super tough T.J. Brown. We've seen T.J. Brown in some wars, um, and he comes out better than most of them. But I'm taking Eric Silva in this one. A lot of people don't know this guy. He's coming in. He's go- he's a killer. Uh, he trains with killers down in Mexico. Uh, this guy literally uh, ran through a division to get that featherweight championship and then got the call up. And did his thing in the contender series too. Much like uh, I told you about Yasmin Hadigi, that's another guy you need to keep your eye on. There's another one coming up next week with Alessandro Costa, I'll tell you about. But right here this week, uh, Eric Silva is the guy to keep an eye on. He's going to be a, a, a definitely a tough uh, competitor in that featherweight division for the UFC. Uh, the, Brandon, there's a lot of other great fights on this card, man. You got Ponzi Nibio going against Alex Morono, who's a late substitution for Robbie Lawler. Uh, Darren Till. If Darren Till makes it to the fight, we'll see. You know his history lately. But he's going against Duplessis, a fight that both fighters kind of called each other out. This is going to be a hell of a grudge match. Bryce Mitchell uh, and Taporia both undefeated. Something's got to give. Both guys seem willing to step into it after their last fights. They both talk shit about each other. Well, here we are. Uh, Rosenstruck versus Chris Dawkins, the older brother, uh, the bigger brother. <laughs> uh, we got the young phenom, uh, Raul Rosas uh, Jr., He's going with against Jay Perrin. That would be interesting to see what the kid does in his debut. Uh, you got Shabazian, who's been really kind of torpedoing, just going downhill lately, but he's always dangerous against uh, Lungmia ba- Lung Uh You got Chris Curtis, who's always fun, going against Joking Buck- Buckley. That's going to be a, a, a highlight reel one way or the other. Uh, you already talked about Billy Q fight. You got St. Pru. They're trying to keep him on the card. His opponent dropped out to visa issues. Um, so we'll see if St. Pru's still on the card. And then uh, we got Salvador versus Daniel Lasarda, who he was on the way out the door, came up with a win, trying to stick around. We'll see what's up with Lasarda. And Simon versus Coslo, two undefeated uh, fighters making their debut, both 6-0 and at Bantamweight to open up the show. Brandon, there's a lot of uh, – not just a lot of great fights on this card. There's a lot of stories and in and out, like, storylines with a lot of these fights. What are some of the uh, things you're really looking forward to on this card besides what we already talked about? Uh, the return of Darren Dill, you know, if he, you know, if he's able to make it there and also to to see how uh, he plays, he does, does against him. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to that Bryce Mitchell to Poria fight. I think that that's going to be, you know, look, striking versus jujitsu, right? Like, can, can he drop Mitchell or if he goes to the ground, can he survive Mitchell's attack? Right. So like, it's really a matter of that. And then also we want to see what the kid does, right? Like the 70 year old phenom, you know, he got the contract. Let's see what he does. Is this another Sage North cut or is this a, you know, a different story? We'll see. Um, he's already been shown training with like Brandon Moreno and some of those other guys taking it seriously, trying to get more tips, trying to get better, um, which is a big deal for somebody that age. Um, and then a fight that nobody's really talking about, Simon versus Coslo in the in the opening fight. Two six and oh, Bantam weights done really good things on the regional scene. Let's see what both of them can do. Now they got the big thing, and of course the the heavyweights, right? Rosenstruck and Dawkins. That that's going to be that's going to be a banger. Um, another great fight card from UFC. They like to finish the year strong usually, um, and they're definitely doing that so far with UFC Orlando, and then going back to Las Vegas for UFC 282. Uh, Brandon, before we get out of here, uh, 
anything you want to tell people this week? Yeah, also, too, uh, remember, we we talked about one. You know, you mentioned uh, TJ Dillashaw retiring, but also, too, Brandon Vera retired as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, OG uh, from UFC saying he he was he was the one that was trying to be the first double champ at heavyweight, light heavyweight. Didn't really work out too well in the UFC. But then, you know, he went to one. Uh, you know, he he was, he was one of the guys that actually got Filipino MMA, uh, you know, uh, promoted. And also he was able to fight in the Philippines a few times because of one. So happy for him and his career. He seemed so excited, you know, uh, to retire. You know, and he and he and he and he was just happy for for the for the ride. So I really wish you know, that just, fight. It, I really wish that fight had been on Prime. Yeah. Um, okay. And also, he's a VA guy, too. Like, uh, he, yep. uh, Norfolk uh, area. So I was always a big fan of Brandon. I grew up in in Northern Virginia, Alexandria. So seeing a Virginia fighter on the on the card, always a big fan of Brandon Vera. Uh, so congrats to the, the truth, Brandon Vera. Uh, good luck in the next chapter. I think he's going to do some more behind the scenes stuff with uh, one as well. And plus, he has his gyms and he's training in the Philippines and in America and doing a lot of traveling. So. Um, Brandon Vera is always a super tough fighter, um, as well as, uh, is it his ex-wife or, or are they still married? Like his, his wife at one point was fighting too. That I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Carrie Vera was like doing some things too. Um, but then she just kind of disappeared. She was like on the old, like strike force stuff and Mm -hmm. she kind of just disappeared. But, um, yeah, I mean, Brandon's been doing his thing for a long time, kind of re, re, vitalized the UFC's I'm sorry the one's a uh, heavyweight division got the title and brought some attention to that so always good stuff uh ladies and gentlemen that is our show today this is art of MMA make sure you give us a follow and a like on all the fighters first channels make sure you shop fighters first dot shop get the mechanic collection get the art of MMA collection support all the fighters uh if you get your orders in by the 10th usually most stuff will get to you before Christmas I think the deadline's technically the 13th but I'd say try to get your orders in before the uh, end of the day on the 10th uh, when this show comes out or this show comes out on the 7th. So you got about three more days uh, for that. So go ahead and get them in before this weekend. Try to get them before Christmas. Uh, But that said, this is a wrap. It's Art of MMA. Enjoy all the fights this weekend for Brandon and myself. We'll see you all later. We're out.